Good day grade 11s, welcome to week 20. In this lesson we're going to have another look at limiting reagents and some problems that we can do with limiting reagents. The reason being is that limiting reagents can be quite a tricky concept, especially when you have to apply them to problems. So let's watch this very good video. Let's say we have some ammonia gas, that's N H3, and it's a gas, that's why the G is in parentheses, and we have, we combine that with some oxygen, molecular oxygen, it's also a gas, and that reaction produces some nitrogen monoxide, NO monoxide, there's only one oxygen there, that's also a gas, this is also called nitric oxide, not to be confused with nitrous oxide, which is all right, nitrous oxide is N2O. This is laughing gas. But anyway, I don't want to divert you too much. We have to focus on the problem. So this is nitric, nitric oxide or nitrogen monoxide. It's a pollutant. I think it comes out of some cigarette smokes. I think it's used in the body as well. You could, you could look it up on the internet. Nitric oxide ammonia is an important fertilizer. You know all about oxygen. And, and this also yields some water. So plus, plus some H2O. And we're told that we're given 34 grams of ammonia. This is the ammonia right there. So 34 grams of ammonia. And we're given 32 grams of oxygen. 32 grams of oxygen. And this is going to be the oxygen molecule, O2. So the question is, is how many grams of nitrogen monoxide or the, or the nitric oxide are going to be produced. So how much of, of the NO, just the NO is going to be produced in grams, NO. So this is a stoichiometry problem. And so the important thing first is to just make sure we have a balanced equation before we even start anything. And lo and behold, we don't have a balanced equation. Let's, let's confirm that it's not balanced. So let's see, we have one nitrogen here. We have one nitrogen there. That looks balanced so far. We have three hydrogens here. And remember, the pattern is start with the complicated stuff. Leave the single atom molecules for last, because those can you can fix at the end without messing anything else up. Hydrogen. We have three hydrogens on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have two hydrogens. We have two hydrogens. So let's see. How can we, make, how can we have three hydrogens on the right-hand side? If we multiply this times 1 and 1 half, 1.5. Now we have three hydrogens on this side. 1.5 times 2, we have three hydrogens on the right-hand side. Things are looking good. Okay, now on the right-hand side, how many, see we have two oxygens on the left-hand side. We have two here. How many oxygens do we have on the right-hand side? We have one oxygen here. And then you have one oxygen in this molecule, but we have a one and a half of the whole molecule. So we have one and a half oxygens, and then we have one more oxygen. So we have two and a half oxygens on the right-hand side, and we only have two in this molecule. So what do we have to do? How can we get two and a half oxygens here? Well, if we multiply it, if we multiply it by five-fourths, or you know, 1.25, right? Five-fourths. Five-fourths times two is five-halves, which is two-and-a-half. So now, right, we have two-and-a-half oxygens. Five-fourths times two is two-and-a-half. One plus one-and-a-half is also two-and-a-half. So now we've balanced our, well, we're not balanced yet. We can't leave this equation with just these, these weird decimal numbers over there. So let's rewrite it. Let's multiply the entire equation by, if we wanted to get rid of all of, the, all of these, we can multiply the entire equation by two. No, no, not not two. We don't want to multiply it. We have to multiply the entire equation by four to get rid of this four in the in the denominator. So if we multiply the entire equation by four, we have let me do it down here. We have four four molecules of ammonia. Or we could even think of it in terms of moles. Right now I'm thinking of individual molecules. We could say, oh, we have four moles of ammonia, four times four times six times 10 to the 23 molecules of ammonia. Either way, it all works out. You're, hopefully you're trying to see the value of moles. Plus five molecules of, I'll just think of it in terms of individual molecules for now, plus five molecules of molecular oxygen. And remember, we're thinking of things in terms of, in, in, in terms of, uh, in, in, in terms of, actually I, don't, I forgot what I was going to say. And we're just multiplying everything by four. That's what we were doing. 
yields, it's late in the day, four moles of ammonia of, of nitrogen monoxide, so four NO, plus, we multiplied both sides by four, so plus six waters, six H2O. So there you go, we got a, some good practice balancing equations. So let's go back to the original problem. We're given 34 grams of ammonia, 34 grams of this. So what we need to figure out is how many moles of ammonia were we given? So what's the atomic mass of ammonia? Or not the atomic mass, what's the molecular mass of ammonia? Nitrogen, let's say we're dealing with nitrogen 14, so it has a mass number of 14. Oxygen has a, or we're dealing with nitrogen, hydrogen has a max number of 1. So each nitrogen so has a mass of 14. And then the hydrogens each have a mass of one. Remember, a hydrogen is kind of strange. It doesn't have neutrons, or at least in its most traditional form. So it has just a mass number of one. It's just a proton and an electron if it's neutral. So this is three times one. Right? We have three hydrogen atoms. So the mass, the atomic mass of one molecule of ammonia is 14 plus three is 17 atomic mass units. Or another way to write that, if if one molecule of ammonia is 17 atomic mass units, then one mole, one mole of one mole of ammonia is how many grams? It's going to be 17 grams. 17 grams. So how many moles of ammonia are we given? We're given 34 grams of ammonia. One mole is 17 grams. So we're given two moles, right? 34 is 2 times 17. So this is two moles. We're given two moles of ammonia. Let's see how much oxygen we're given, or how much of the molecular oxygen we're, we've we've been given in this case. So let's see the atomic the the mass of just oxygen by itself is 16, right? The mass of just oxygen, just the atomic oxygen. It's careful. You have to be a little bit careful here because sometimes people say, "Oh, we have 32 grams of oxygen," where they're really talking about the molecular oxygen, right? Well, I guess it doesn't matter either way, but so but sometimes when they talk about oxygen, you have to make sure you, whether it's molecular or atomic oxygen. But the atomic mass number of oxygen is 16. And we can confirm that looking at the periodic table down here. 16. So what's the molecular mass of the diatomic molecule O2? Well, it has two oxygens, so it's going to be 2 times 16. It equals 32 atomic mass units. One molecule of O2 is 32 atomic mass units, or one mole, one mole of O2 is how many grams? Well, if one atom, if one molecule is 32 atomic mass units, then six times 10 to the 23 of that molecule are going to be that many grams, 32 grams. So, how many moles of oxygen have we been given? We've been given exactly 32 grams of oxygen, which is exactly one mole. So we've been given 34 grams of ammonia, which is two moles. So let me write that in a nice, vibrant color. So we've been given two moles of NH3, of ammonia. And we've been given one mole, one mole of the oxygen molecule. Now, when we look at this reaction, for every, for every four moles of ammonia, we need five moles of oxygen. Or for every five moles of oxygen, we need four moles of ammonia. So what something doesn't gel here. Normally we need more moles of oxygen than we have ammonia. In, in the example that we just, we're, we're working through, we've been given less moles of oxygen than ammonia. We've been get, given less oxygen than we need for all of this ammonia. right? In an ideal world, if we had two moles of ammonia, we would need two and a half moles of oxygen, right? The ratio of ammonia to oxygen, let me write that down. The ratio, in a different color, this is getting boring. The ratio of ammonia, NH3, to oxygen in our, in our balanced equation, let me put that in the, in the square so you know this is the most important part of what I'm writing. The ratio in this reaction is four, four to five, right? So if I'm given two moles of ammonia, if I'm given two moles of this, so this is equal to what? If I'm given two moles of ammonia, how many moles of oxygen do I need? I need two and a half moles of, ox of oxygen, 
right? Whatever this is, is that right? You have four fifths, right? 1.25, right? Right, if you doubled both of these numbers, you get 4 over 5, right? So I need 2.5 moles. But I don't have 2.5 moles of oxygen. I only have 1 mole of oxygen. So oxygen is going to be the limiting reagent in this reaction. Limiting reagent. I don't have enough oxygen. I have plenty of ammonia, but I don't have enough oxygen to react with it. So this is the limiting reagent. Limiting reagent. And I said before, you can just, the word reagent and reactant, they're used interchangeably. But when people talk about the limiting ones, they tend to call it the reagent. So oxygen is a limiting reagent. So we have extra ammonia. So given that we have one mole of oxygen, how many moles of ammonia can I react with that? How many moles of ammonia can I react with that? So the, 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 this, this, this reaction is going to look something like this. I only have one mole of oxygen. So instead of 502, I have to write 102. And if I have, let me make sure it's not a 10. So it's 102. Let me do it in a different color because I don't want to think I have a. I only have 102 instead of 502s. So how many ammonias are going to react with that? Well, the ratio is 4 to 5. So I'm going to have 0.8 ammonias, right? 4 is to 5 is 0.8 is to 1. And so essentially, if I take that whole, this whole equation up here and divide it by 5, I'll get what's actually going to happen. So this divided by 5 is 0.8 nitric oxide, or nitrogen monoxide, plus 6 fifths moles of H2O. And so the question was, the original question at the beginning is, how many grams of nitric oxide are we going to produce, or nitrogen monoxide? So how many grams are we going to produce? So we have 1 mole of oxygen, 0.8 moles of, nitrog of ammonia, and we're going to produce 0.8 moles of nitrogen oxide, or not sorry, not, not, of nitrogen monoxide, right? Because we only have one oxygen. So 0.8 moles, 0.8 moles of nitric oxide or nitrogen monoxide. So what's the atomic mass, the molecular mass of nitrogen monoxide? Nitrogen is 14, has is 14 atomic mass units. Oxygen is 16, all right? We've done that before, but you can confirm here. Oxygen is 16, nitrogen is 14. So one molecule of nitrogen monoxide is going to so one at one molecule molecule of nitrogen monoxide is equal to 30 atomic mass units. One mole one mole or 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of nitrogen oxide, therefore, will be 30 grams. And how many moles are we producing in this reaction? Because oxygen was the limiting reagent. We only had one mole of oxygen here. Because of that, we can only produce 0.8 moles of nitrogen monoxide. So 0.8 moles of nitrogen monoxide. One mole is 30 grams. So 0.8 moles, moles of NO is going to be equal to 0.8 times 30, which is equal to 24 grams. 24 grams. So we're going, to able, we're going to be able to produce 24 grams of nitrogen monoxide. And so you might ask the question, look, we're only using, we're only using 0.8. We're only using 0.8 moles of ammonia. We were given, in the original problem, we were given 2 moles of ammonia. We were given 2 moles of ammonia. So what happens with all the leftover ammonia? Well, assuming we mix it really good, we're going to literally end up with 1.2 moles of ammonia just doing nothing at the end. So we're going to end up with, so we're going to have 24 grams of nitric oxide, and then we're going to, we used, we used 0.8 moles of ammonia, and we're going to have left 1.2 moles of ammonia. And if you want, you can figure out how many of the original grams of ammonia that is. You just figure out how many grams one mole of ammonia is. It's 17 grams, and then just multiply that times 1 point. Right, grade 11s. I hope that was a good reminder of what limiting reagents are and how to work them out at the beginning of a question, because you need to do that before you can do the rest of the stoichiometry problems. Um, we will carry on with stoichiometry in the next few lessons. Have a good day.